Last week's episode ended with a horrific battle at the end of the Third Era and the tragic death of Rovash's Uncle Kalin. Hmm, I hope this week has better news. My name is Carly Bond. Come in, sit down, as I read Tales of Eldalorn, Book One. Today we're on Chapter 19. Homeward Come. By the Lord's my aching gut. Rovash groaned as he rolled over suddenly awake. I'm going to die of this starvation. His head pounded with the dizziness of dehydration. His empty gut growled so loud he felt nauseous. Ro sat up on the edge of the bed and found Ejlam and Fiona moving quickly across the floor with a huge tray of food and jugs of water. It had been a whole week since the near-fatal mauling. Rovash's wounds from the lion attack were healed. Only thin lines of pink scars remained to fade in time. That was bad, very bad, EJ said seriously about the attack. You are made of strong stuff, Ninhan. He helped his brother move to the small table where he'd set the tray down. I've had much practice. Ro's voice was rough from just waking. He grabbed one of the enormous jugs of water from Fiona and downed it. Splashing water over his neck and down the front of himself, he drank. Fiona just frowned as she thought about wiping up the floor, but then she ignored the mess and sat down with the guys. Rose's eyes shifted between Ejlam and Fiona and the tray as he ate like a madman. Slow down, Fiona glared at him. Then she added more softly with her hand on his arm, You will hurt yourself. Fiona's command worked for some reason, and Rovash became slightly more civilized in his desperate cramming of food into his mouth. After the long silence of just eating and drinking, Ro began to talk. He was more energized than Fiona had ever seen him before. Apparently, he could be as goofy as his sibling, but in a more subtle, straight-faced sort of way. Fiona had to really pay attention to keep up with the conversation. I stupidly lost my eye in one of my first battles, Ro cheerfully said, telling them the story between swallows. It was over 300 years before I got it back. Oh? Ejlam was shocked by what his brother had said. Fiona liked the way EJ's emotions were so clearly shown on his face. She thought it was endearing. Her thoughts drifted off and she smiled to herself until Rovash started choking on food again. Then she put back her stern, I told you so face and glared at him as she patted him on the back. 
Sorry, I will slow down, Rose said, cringing at her. He showed his teeth in what was meant to be a smile, but he looked ridiculous with a mouthful of food. Fiona just sighed and nibbled on the edge of some toasted bread, having at that very moment lost her appetite. How did you get your eye back? Fiona finally asked, wanting to hear the rest of the story. Lady Galbraith healed me. Oh? Fiona imagined another naked elf pile with Roe somewhere underneath. No, not like that, E.J. interjected into her mind. Rovash continued. Galbraith was the very beautiful and gracious sovereign of Caris Elderhan. She was also called the Lady of Light. She could grant healing through her mind and voice. He kept talking, not noticing the exchange going on around him. You are in my head! Fiona looked sternly at EJ with wild, crazy eyes. So, you are in my head as well. He just smiled and tried to look his cutest as he shrugged and ate something green that was in his hand. Ugh, EJ! Fiona complained out loud. Your mind speak is so improved, he whispered innocently in her mind again as he delicately searched the tray for something more to eat. Her eyes narrowed at him. Am I missing something? Rovash broke in, stuffing a strawberry into his mouth while looking at her and then looking at him. No, brother, EJ said out loud. I am pleased you were so made whole. He playfully tossed something edible into the air and caught it in his mouth with a big toothy grin. Fi just gave him a mildly disgusted look as she nibbled on a slice of cheese. What news is there of Edelin? EJ asked, changing the subject. Most, or maybe even all, have gone from the land since the end of the Third Age, Roe said. He sadly shook his head as he looked for some more grapes on the tray. He had to settle for some half-boiled egg that he cracked open expertly in one hand and dumped into his face. Can we travel to our mother's home? E.J. asked excitedly. I do not know what would remain of it. It might be a bad idea to see the old place so poor, or even gone completely. With that known, we could travel there to honor our mother's memory by the river. Each of them tried to sound optimistic. Yes, Rose stopped his chewing long enough to think about it. You may have a good idea. Wait, all this time you refused to go anywhere when I was searching for my clan, to be exact, and now you're so easily convinced? Fiona tried not to look angry at Rovash since he just came back from death's door and all, but she must have looked like she wanted to hurt him. Ro hesitated, staring at her like a startled deer in the sights of a drawn bow, and then chose his next words very carefully. We will ask after your kin as well on the way. Ro tried to smile reassuringly, but smiling just never worked for him. I know all the roads that run across this land. I have suffered them many times in this long life. Ro was back to his usual frowning self as he kept one eye on Fiona for any sudden moves. So, in 500 years, we will see what has changed, EJ added, gazing lovingly at his smoldering Fiona as they cleaned up the last of the foods on the tray. (laughs) 
Hey, when I play video games, I like to take Oreo cookies and dip them in instant coffee crystals. Homemade mocha Oreos, that's what I call it. So how do you like my informational non-commercial? Surprise! Carly Bond has decided to go commercial free. You can help out by giving me a five-star review so other people can find me. Every little bit helps in this non-commissioned, starving artist world that I live in. And that thing about Oreo cookies, everything in moderation, it's not fake news, it's great. Yum. Pass the word along, Eldalorn is a fun place to visit. Well, for the time being anyway. And on with the show. The men of the guard cheered when their commander finally stepped out of his chamber into the courtyard. He was told another lion had been found and slain near the cliff edge. Something has upset the balance of the valley to the northwest. These lions have strayed from where their tribes are most commonly found. Rovash explained as he led EJ and Fiona up the stairs into the western watchtower. This is a bad time to be leaving, he mumbled remembering the smell of high sea and how the stench would drive animals out of their minds. Maybe there is something else out there, he said, as he peered out over the watchtower rampart toward the valley. It was a clear day, and the view went on for leagues. You could see the silver of the ocean beyond the horizon over the valley's edge, Ro looked down at the cliff where the lion attack had almost killed them all. He knew Fiona liked to sit out there among the flowering trees. It was usually a safe place, even though it was outside the boundaries of the fort's barricade. He thought he might have the men cut back and thin out the tree line so enemies could never get so close without them noticing. Then Ro turned his mind to a closer task at hand. Fiona would never survive, and you might not either, Ro said. He watched his kin with the critical eye of the commander inspecting raw recruits. She is fat, he said disapprovingly. His eyes looked Fiona up and down with a stern expression that she had seen many times before, but this time his scrutiny was turned on her. What? Fiona glared with a red fury rising in her face. EJ whispered in her mind, he means girl-like. EJ struggled with finding the word for soft. He quickly settled for not trained in battle before Fiona escalated out of control. Oh, she said with a long breath. Fiona was starting to feel thankful for the intrusive mind speak as EJ saved her from misunderstanding a second time. She didn't want to inflict fresh wounds on his shiny new brother anyway. Then we shall train, Ejlum volunteered cheerfully with a big disarming smile. You know this will calm my heart, Rovash said as he put his hand lightly on EJ's shoulder. I too have been made weak, he added solemnly. Days were long, starting at first light and ending just after dark. EJ and Fiona learned of bows and blades, proper stance and dodge, and when and where to strike a critical blow on your enemy. Fiona practiced with her wizard staff. Flames grew to fireballs and ice or stone spiraled upward high enough to block, surround an enemy, or create steps for the brothers. They could then launch themselves over or on top of their target. The three soon became a tightly choreographed team in battle practice. 
EJ and Ro fell into their youthful competitive ways and were always egging each other onto faster, more grueling precision. It was a sight to see the graceful and effortless form of Edelin at their deadliest. We will leave south on the week's end, Roe announced at dinner. I think any foes unlucky to find us will be sorry, he added with his usual scowling smile. The guard will take care of itself for a while. I left detailed orders with my second in command. He will explain my disappearance as my duty to escort my newlywed kin to their southern home especially after the lion attack. Humans view this as important. After all, my new sister is so fat and helpless. He cocked his eyebrow and looked sideways at Fiona while taking a massive chunk out of a roast. She just eyed him back and gave him a good jab to the ribs with her elbow. They all smiled and laughed and ate well, because tomorrow was going to be another long day. I wish we had some whey bread, Ejlam said wistfully. Mother made the best bread. Ro looked at his little brother and said, Maybe we'll find a recipe book. EJ couldn't tell if Rovash was being sarcastic with that last comment or not. His eyes narrowed at his brother as he completed tying up a bundle onto his shoulder pack for the trip. Tensions were high as they prepared to set out to the old family home after so much time had passed. What is whey bread? Fiona asked. It's an elven bread, like a small flat bread that would easily fit in a pouch. You would never have to starve as long as you had some in your pack. And EJ is always hungry, Ro added to his brother's moaning. He gave EJ a knowing glance and a smile to let him know he was adding to the conversation and not trying to start an argument. The trail south was uneventful for the first few days. They didn't feel hurried as they started their long trek along the edge of the Vodla River. I remember running this path in only two weeks, Rovash reminisced. Of course, I was much younger in those days. Mostly what they saw were signs of small game and wolves. The larger plains beasts ran in abundant herds. The evil that was so prevalent in the Third Age seemed to have faded into fable along with the Edelin. Kamloo was the first actual village they came across. The guys kept their hoods up over their ears so not to frighten the people. Supplies were bought as well as a room for the night. I will be happy not to be sleeping under a tree, Fiona said, reaching for EJ's arm. They asked about Edelin everywhere they went, and again Fiona found the short-lived humans had turned their memory into myth. Many did not even know if they believed the stories were true. I am not surprised, EJ said to Fiona, who was looking increasingly disappointed. Trying to help her feel better, Rovash suggested, We travel south towards Renoble, but there is a hidden pass through the mountains west and north of here that leads to the elven city of Etten Falls. We could go that way first and see for ourselves if they have all gone from there. They all decided they might spend the time to travel there on their way back from Eldalorn. 
Maybe someone will still be around, Biona looked hopeful, as they bedded down for the night in the tiny room of the inn. In the single beat of a heart, in the tear drying in the cold breeze, everything can change in that moment of a split second. Once again, Rovash has survived a close call with the true death. With his beloved family at his side, they're heading out on a new adventure. Our trio of elves are going to Eldalorn, I wonder what they hope to find. Well, you'll just have to come back next week to find out the rest of the story. See you then. Elvish lesson of the day. One of my favorite songs is by the Beatles, All You Need Is Love. Demolin, I love you. I think we could say that more often. Demolin, Melanamine, I love you, my friend. If I see you on the road, I will not hesitate to wave. If you come to me, I will hug you to my heart. Demolin, Melanamine. Feeling of the 